Okay, welcome back. This video is going to show you how to use the hole tool in Fusion 360. Some people like to just sketch a circle and then extrude it through a part to create a hole, which is you know one way of doing things, but it doesn't have the same um, versatility that the hole tool's got. There's a lot of different things you can do with the hole tool, and that's what I'm gonna try to show you today. We can select this from the top menu here, or we can just type H on our keyboard and it will pull up the hole tool. And without doing a whole lot of other work, we can just sort of click on the surface where we want to place a hole. We can drag the location of that hole around to the spot that we want it, and we can use the arrows that are here to resize the diameter and depth of the hole as needed. And we can type these values in to be as precise as we want. Um, there is a lot more that can go on here within the options of the whole tool, and I will get into some of that. Uh, but for that, I would prefer to be a little bit more precise with where the hole is placed. So I'm actually going to create a new sketch on this top surface of the part. And I'm going to define my hole centers using points. So using the point tool right here, I'm going to place five centers evenly across the top of my object. Now when I select the hole tool, I have the option to either place a hole based on a single center point that I can choose from my sketch, or I can choose multiple. So I'll show you what that looks like. If I select multiple different center points, then I can pick as many of these as I want to from my sketch here, and I can make all of these holes the same. So this would work even if those points were on different surfaces and pointed in different directions. So that's why you might do it this way instead of using, uh, say, a rectangular pattern tool to repeat a feature in a straight line. Uh, these don't all necessarily have to be in a straight line. They can be in any, any position that I define in my sketch. But I'm going to do this one at a time so I can show you a few different types of holes. So if I select this top surface and then I pick one of my points, it's going to center my hole on that point that I defined in the sketch. And now I can get in here and mess around a bit with the sizes of things. So we have the option to make our hole go a specific distance into the material, or we can make it go to another feature and stop at that point, or we can make it go all the way through. For this first one, I'm just going to create a through hole. It's going to go all the way through my part. So I'll keep the type of hole as simple, and it doesn't really matter in a through hole which type of point we put on it because we're not going to see that bottom point. But the points can mimic either a pointed drill bit or a flat bottom drill bit. If you were using something like an end mill to do your drilling, you can make that accurate in your model. So with a through hole, I can't really define my depth, but I can define my diameter. So right now it's set at one inch. I'm going to change that to half an inch. I see my model preview update and I'll go ahead and keep that. And to see what I'm doing as I go here, I'm going to create a section analysis that's gonna let me sort of slice away the front half of my object here as I go to show each of the various different holes. So this is a pretty simple little through hole, just going all the way through half inch diameter, and I'll go back to my normal view. <clears throat> Next up, let's place another hole on this surface and center it on the next point. And this time I want to create a counter bore. So I'm going to keep this as a through hole, but I'm going to change the type of the hole over to a counter bore. And a counter bore is nice for if we have a fastener that we need to sink below the surface to where it's not going to be uh, visible or not going to be something that you feel across the top surface here, like if you want to recess the head of a bolt. Uh, counter bore is the way to go. So as soon as I select counter bore, I get some new options down here in the window. I can select, I can set my diameter of the counter bore. I can set the depth of the counter bore, and I can set the diameter of my hole. And for this, I'll make that three eighths of an inch in diameter, seven eighths of an inch in diameter for the counter bore, and a quarter of an inch deep for the counter bore. My Preview is looking good, so I'll accept that. And back to the section analysis, now we can see how it's sort of a larger hole at the opening, and then it's a smaller hole 
down below, all done with one move in my whole tool. On to the next one. Let's have a look at a countersink. Countersink is similar to a counterbore, uh, except that it is sort of cone shaped. So we use this with fasteners that have a pointed cone shaped bottom to their to their head, where they wouldn't sit in the flat bottom of the counterbore very well. So in this case, I'm going to switch this to a, a distance hole. It's not. It's going to be a blind hole. It doesn't go all the way through the part. And I'll toggle over to the countersink. When I do that, the shape of my preview down here changes, and I can set the diameter of my countersink and the angle of the countersink. And that 82 degree angle is pretty standard. That doesn't really change much. I will change my depth from one and a half inches to one, and I'll change my diameter here from 3 eighths to 3 sixteenths. Once again, we'll slice this back, and we can see that that hole did not go all the way through. I have my drill bit set to a pointed drill bit, so it's modeling that feature down here at the bottom. And I have my cone-shaped recess there where the head of a wood screw or something like that would sit. Next, I will show you how we can make a tapped hole. That's a hole with some threads in it, so I'll select that as my center here. We'll go back to a simple hole and not a countersunk. And I want to go back to a through hole instead of a blind hole. This time, on my second row of options where it says hole tap type, I'm going to change this from simple over to tapped. And when I do that, some other things down here change. So I can set my diameter down here. I, I have this new series of menus pulled up for what kinds of threads that I want to make. So I have a list here of different screw thread standards and profiles that I could choose from. I'm going to mostly be working in ANSI screw threads, but uh, we also have in all kinds of other thread standards that we could use. For the size of this hole, I want to drop this down to a 3 eighths diameter hole. And when I do that, I, I'm prompted to use 3 eighths by 16 UNC for my thread spacing. But I do have lots of other different types of thread spacing that I could use for a 3 eighths inch diameter hole. I'm going to keep it at the ANSI standard here. Next is the class of screw thread. These are all class B since these are internal threads instead of external threads. Uh, for the tolerance, two is by far the most common. And 1 and 3 are just not used as much. I can make either a right-handed or a left-handed thread, but if we want our bolt to go into this righty tighty and lefty loosey instead of the opposite then we'll keep that on a right-handed thread now i also have a little checkbox here to either make this modeled or not modeled i'll uncheck this for now so we can see what that looks like when i when i don't choose modeled this is what i get i get a surface appearance that looks like threads but it's not actually changing the physical model this wouldn't actually change the mass or the volume of my model because it's not actually cutting threads here when i don't choose that option uh, this speeds things up a little bit so that fusion does not have to do the math on all of these surfaces and all of the appearances on it, all of these surfaces each time i rotate or change views if i go back into that operation and i check the modeled box now when i zoom in on this and have a look it's actually cut these threads into the object. It's created new surfaces and, and truly threaded the part. So we'll look at this again once more in the sectional analysis, and we can see that it's actually cut those threads versus before when it was not modeled and it just looked like threads. Finally, let's do one more, and this time with my last point here, I'm going to create another tapped hole but this time it's going to be a blind hole. It's not going to go all the way through. A tapped hole doesn't have to go all the way through. I'll make that one inch deep. If I wanted to, I could make my threads go uh, just a, a certain amount of the distance into the hole using an offset. Uh, I'm going to keep this on full threads for now. I'll change my diameter to a half inch diameter hole which is going to give me lots of different options for thread patterns. I want to stick with UNC here, Unified National, and that means 12 by 13. 
and keep that on a tolerance of two, right-handed and modeled. And once more, when I look at this now, I don't have a clearance hole going all the way through. I just have a blind hole with that half inch diameter and the 13 threads per inch. So that's a quick look at the hole tool. Hopefully you found that useful. If you are working on the assignment, then you should turn your analysis on just like this so that your model appears the same way that mine does. Right click to open up the properties window and screenshot your screen looking just like this and submit that for the assignment. Good luck.